Hello, I'm Richard Murphy and I want to talk about a topic which comes up frequently in economics, which is what is inflation and is it a risk? And the answer is complex. Let's be honest. It's something that we think we understand and it's quite difficult. Inflation is about a change in the relative value of money. In other words, we know we want to buy a product. Yeah, let's call that simply I don't know, a box of tea. And the price of that changes not because the cost of the product itself has changed, but because the value of money has changed. Now, if we have to pay more for the tea because the value of money is effectively falling, that's called inflation. If we have to pay less for the tea because the value of money is rising, that's deflation. And you'll immediately notice that the language I used appears to be the inverse of what you expect because the value of money is falling so the price rises. Now this, as I say, is something that takes a little bit of thinking to get your head round. So inflation is normal. It's actually commonplace for the value of money to effectively fall with regard to that particular products over time. Throughout history, we have seen that happen. So when I was a child, I can well remember getting half a crown pocket money a week and thinking that I was quite well off. That was 12 and a half pence. Give a child 12 and a half pence as pocket money now, and they most certainly won't think that they're well off. But I could buy quite a lot with 12 and a half pence, and of course, you can't now. So the value of money has changed. Now, that's why people worry about inflation. They think it's going to mean that the money they've got won't be worth as much in the future. And let's be categorical about this. That's almost certainly going to be true because history tells us that's the case. But is that a worry? And why does it happen? Let's deal with those questions in order. Is it a worry? No. It's not a worry if we don't have much inflation. In fact, some inflation is really good thing to have. I'm going to say that again because I missed out a critical word. Is that a good thing? Yes, it is. Some inflation is really beneficial. We want a little inflation in our economy, and there's a good reason for that. That's because when people think that the price of things is going to rise, they spend money now, and that's good for us because it keeps demand going, but it does something else as well it makes us feel as though our incomes are rising because of course not only is the price of product rising but our incomes go up as well. A little inflation curiously creates a lot of confidence. People feel as though things are getting better. When we have deflation, which is the opposite, and it has happened, it happened in the 1930s for example in the UK, people feel very badly off. Their incomes are falling, literally, they're being told you'll have a wages cut and they may not be able to afford either because they haven't got as much income as they had or because, relatively speaking, the prices of products are rising. That they can't, relatively speaking, I stress, they can't live as well as they could. So deflation is bad for morale and some inflation is good for morale. So what we worry about when it comes to inflation is not a bit of inflation, it's lots of inflation. Now, the biggest amount of inflation we've had in the UK for a very long time was 26%, and it happened in about 1976-77 um, under the Labour government. And I'm going to do a separate video on why that particular episode arose, because it was quite freakish. But let me move on to the qu question as to why this happens, rather than do we get lots of it and is it a major worry? Because that 26% is so exceptional, so unusual, and hyperinflation of any sort is so rare in the world that we need to talk about why inflation happens and therefore why hyperinflation, very high rates of inflation, are also rare. Inflation happens because there's more money chasing fewer goods. Now that requires, therefore, there to be more money. More money is created by the government if it creates more money, and that it can do by spending more than it taxes and it's created by banks who can lend more money into the economy than there is demand to fulfil. So two sources of money creation can create inflation. Both can be controlled by the government. 
But there are other sources of inflation as well, because those ones are highly manageable. And they're unlikely, because they're highly manageable, to give rise to any form of hyperinflation. The sorts of things that give rise to major inflationary pressures tend to happen outside the domestic economy. And I can give a couple of examples. One are major changes in raw material prices. If we go back to the 1970s, why was there hyperinflation? Well, major inflation in the 1970s, not just in the UK, but virtually around the world. Well, oil prices went up. It was suddenly apparent to the oil producing nations that they could dramatically increase the price of oil and Western economies had no choice but buy it. So for the first time, we saw in particular the Middle Eastern oil producers bringing enormous pressure to bear on Western economies, partly in pursuit of their political objectives, partly around their own wars at the time with Israel, to bring inflation into our economies to try to destabilize us, to actually deliberately undermine Western economic solidarity. And they succeeded. There was nothing we could do about this. We had to pay the price. And because oil was so, so universal as the raw material driving our economies, prices went through the roof. That's one cause. And the other one is that actually we get a relative change in our exchange rate with other countries. So that what once cost, well, let's suppose a euro was one pound, uh, one pound for one euro fifty, and now the euro is one euro ten to a pound, the, of course we have to pay more relatively to buy our imports. That's exactly the same pressure as arises if, if we'd had an oil price increase. So relative changes in exchange rates can also import inflation into the economy. And how do those changes in ex exchange rates happen? Well, usually by political choice. We've had a massive change in exchange rates in the last three years in the UK, and that's entirely because of Brexit. Nothing else can explain why we've had a substantial fall in the value of the pound, which could have created inflationary pressure, but it hasn't because of the weird economic times we live in. So three causes of inflation, commodity price increase, changes in exchange rate, and the one that the government can control, which is the amount of money in circulation in the economy. Do we need to worry about these? Look, changes in commodity prices are beyond our control. If they happen, they're short term, they put themselves right. They create some disruption for two or three years and then it's over. Exchange rate differences tend to be because of major political events. They only come along very occasionally. Brexit is obviously an unusual one-off event. It's not gonna happen again. They flow through the system, they go away. They aren't a major cause of disruption. So the only thing we need to worry about, and the only thing which the government can in effect control within the monetary system of our economy, is money creation. And they can control that. They can control how much they spend. They can control how much of what they spend they cancel through taxation, and they should. And they can control how much credit the banks create, which is the other way in which money is injected into the economy. Now we know that, and now we understand that, and now that's been understood around the world, Here's the fact. Inflation hardly exists anywhere in the world right now. In countries which are under control with regard to their external pricing of raw materials and under control with regard to their exchange rates. In other words, in countries like the UK, in countries like the USA and France and Germany and Japan and Australia and so on, inflation is such a rare phenomenon that we actually can't find it. Indeed, we can't even work out how to create enough of it to make people feel good about the economy anymore. So instead of worrying about inflation, most economists now worry about deflation. The fact is we can't create enough inflation to keep people happy because people do feel better when there's a bit of inflation around. So actually, is there a risk of major inflation at the moment? No, almost none. Not unless there's another external price shock from something like oil, which is now very unlikely because we're reducing our demand for oil because we are changing our consumption patterns as a result of going green. So I don't see the risk of any major inflation again. What I do see is the risk that the fear of inflation will cripple our government spending enough to make sure that we have sufficient demand in our economy to provide full employment. And so long as we haven't got full employment, everybody at work, 
then there's not too much money chasing too few goods because by definition we can have more goods by putting people to work. So we can't create inflation until we have full employment. Now this is a long and complex answer to the question of what is inflation, how do we get it and how do we manage it. But my point is the fear of inflation is one that is going away because we understand it better than we ever have and that's because we now know that tax is the tool to take it out of our economies in the way in which it is most commonly created and that means this is a fear we don't now have to live with. I'm Richard Murphy, thanks for watching. If you're interested in videos of this sort please push the subscribe button below this one on the YouTube channel, follow me on Twitter at Richard J Murphy and look at my blog Tax Research UK. I'll see you again soon.